Dawn of Peacemakers is an evolving board game with a continuing campaign. Players take roles of adventurers attempting to quell the hostilities between two warring sides. You will have to trust in your fellow players and cooperate with them in order to reach a peaceful conclusion. The game consists of a number of scenarios which form an entire story driven campaign. There are multiple secrets in the game box to be unveiled in certain points of the story. Welcome to my playthrough of the first scenario of Dawn of Peacemakers. Hey everyone, this is Sir Thuggers, and today I'll play through the first scenario of Dawn of Peacemakers, which is set in Daemuria, the same world as both the original Dale of Merchants and Dale of Merchants 2, even though it takes place almost 1000 years before those games. And before we start playing, I will just set up the first scenario. Since this is the tutorial scenario, there isn't a whole lot of story in the beginning yet, but we have four adventurers we can choose and I am choosing Nabo, which is the polecat, and um, we have a letter here. Oh, of course, you need to know, of course, that this playthrough contains spoilers, so just that you know. And there is a letter addressed to Nabo, which I will now read out before we start playing. So you see, there's like an official letter to him. To Nabo, I hope a short introduction will suffice. I'm Maron, a former traveler who now calls all of South America his home. Dark clouds gather over my continent, for two nations have once again irritated each other to the point where any incident could result in a catastrophic war. I will not let my home be wrecked by such a conflict. You are a famed adventurer, Nabo. Tales of your journeys have reached even here. They tell of a fearless marbled polecat with a knack for finding as much treasure as he finds trouble. And I have heard it is a lot. The grandness of legends tell that all the treasure in your house has blinded some of your guests. I am sure that you have already heard all of this, so I apologize for stating the obvious. My real point is that even a small part of those tales is true, I will need your skills. My contacts tell me that you're here in South America searching for another artifact to add to your collection. I happen to have been an adventurer too, a long time ago. I have a sizable treasure collection of my own and I would gladly let you choose anything from it in exchange for your help. There's risk involved in this task, and it might be a long one. But if the stories about you are to be believed, you'll have no trouble walking through a battlefield. My contacts would also provide you with an easy access to the army camps. Should you accept my offer, travel to the end of the mighty river a Jason, and you'll hear more and maybe meet some of the other adventurers I've contacted. Meron. Alright, so this is the starting point of our adventure. So we're making our way to the river and you see we are at the river now and we see the macaws and the ocelots fighting each other. And this is the premise of the game. These two factions keep fighting each other and they have decks here that we turn around each round and th these decks indicate how they fight each other and we see that they have a motivation of six here the macaws and the also has a motivation of four. Oh, that was the camera and we need to try to lower their motivation so that both of them are in the green area so they have one or two motivation each we can do that with our resource deck this is the way we can work around that all right so let's get started all right and i start the game by drawing two cards so and now i have several options so first of all i can use the top one here with the card that means i can take a look at one of the decks lying here the order decks um i will come to them in a minute um but i can only do that with a companion unit stick so the companion unit is a unit that is on my space so i first need to move on one of the macaw spaces, for example, to be able to do that with the decks here. Um, the boots mean that I can walk up to that many spaces. And then we have a third symbol usually down here, which you can't see right now, but other cards have them. It's like a fortification symbol, so I can put fortification cubes on specific tiles. But these are not for, meant for the units, but for the tiles, actually. So if the units move out of these spaces, they are not fortified anymore. And the fourth thing I can do is use these special skills 
or special abilities down here. Okay, so, and now it's my turn. Uh, what I want to reach now is these two will be fighting each other each turn. And what they will do is pretty much randomly indicated by these two decks. And the Macaws have a motivation of six at the moment, the Ocelots of four, and I want both to be reduced to one or two. That's what I want to do. Um, at the same time, and if I reach that, then I actually win the scenario. Um, so first, I have my turn. Um, so distraction, all your companion units, range is reduced to one during this turn. That doesn't help me a whole lot because I actually want them to fight each other because I can lower motivation. For example, if one of the units is killed, then the motivation is lowered by one or the Macaw leader here, Commander Such Suchiyamad, I think that's how you pronounce him maybe. Cautious leader, if, if he is injured, lower his side's motivation by one step. Injured means that he has at least half his health reduced. He has health of eight, so if he gets four damage or more, then we will reduce the motivation by one. That could be very helpful. So I'm not quite sure what I want to do yet. I think I want to save up some save up some cards first. So I think I'm just going to rest this round. I'm going to draw four cards because I get to redraw these each round at the end after my turn. Um, in a And you always draw four cards, even with a higher player count. So if you play with four players, each player only receives one card, so you have to cooperate more. Since I play solo, I receive all four cards for myself. I'm just going to collect these cards and see what these armies are going to do. So... Let's just see. And you see when we spread them out, we have like this one scroll here that tells us exactly what is going, going to happen. This is the order here. All right, so we see the speed in the lower left, normal. And here we have normal too. So they, are, uh, they would happen at the same time, but then we look at the order on the right here. And we see if the cover is further to the right than move. So move will always happen first, then cover, then strike. So these will go first. So move units in the group forward, the cog group. So you see these have like cog standees down here and these have round circle markers. And here we have like a star shape and a round shape. Okay, so these will go first, roll the die and we need to roll until we have one of the groups. We have like a circle group here, that's great. So that means move units in the circle group forward. They will always move um, indicated by that arrow. So the authors always to the left and the macaws always to the right. So he will move onto my space. And then it's the macaws turn. Um, the, here is no special addendum here, and we only have that cover. So they receive cover for this round, which doesn't matter because they are not being attacked. Okay, and now it's my turn again. So um, now I actually want their motivation, the macaws motivation to be reduced significantly. So what I'm gonna do I will look at the deck of the ocelots, which I can do because I have a companion unit here. So let me see. Um, is there anything? Well, these friendly guide cards are very good because with this I can move units around. So I will try to keep those cards. So I will use a distraction card. Use that one to take a look at the top card here. Um, they gain, they would gain a shield fortification next round, which doesn't help me. So I'm going to pay one more card to turn over the next card. Strike. That is good. We want them to strike, actually. So I will keep that. So I will put them back in the order that the strike card is on top. So now I know that these are going to attack. He's actually going to damage here. He is not going to reach this guy because he has only... No, he has three range. He has three range because that's the archer here on the left. So he will actually also reach him. So these two will be damaged next round, which is not too bad. Okay, so these will be discarded. I will not take a look at these cards. I will just leave it the way it is. Okay, and now we turn over the next cards. Okay, so we have start of army phase. Unknown speed doesn't matter because we have start of army phase. This will go first. Revoked. At the start of the army phase, cancel the task part of this order. This is good because they would cover and I don't want them to cover. So that's good. And lower the size motivation by one. Perfect. Nice. Now it's their turn. Roll the die. Based on the roll, determine deploy speed. Doesn't matter because start of army phase went first. And here attack with units in the car group. I know because I looked at that. So this is a warrior. Range 2, damage 3. So 
he will reach that guy and do three damage. We indicate that by these with these damage tokens here. So this guy has three damage and has five health altogether. And this guy has a range of three and damage three, so he will also damage. He would he would damage this guy, but this guy is on a stealth field. So this means he can only be damaged by units on or on this field or adjacent to him. So this guy would actually not be able to damage him. Which is bad because we wanted him to be damaged, but that's fine for now. Okay, so now it's our turn again. Um, oh, I didn't draw these four cards last round, so I will do that now. One, two, oh, not that one. One, two, three, four. That's fine. So now we have a lot more cards. So, okay, good. So what do I want? Um, all your companion units have stealth until you leave your space. That could have uh, That could help us later on. All your companion units have guard during this round. I think I will keep on looking through the order tasks there. Um, we could maybe work on getting this guy to attack this one here. So um, that wouldn't be too bad. So this guy would be then gone. Um, also, we could see if we get got the leader to the front and also this guy to the front. So we get them closer a little bit better. So that's something we could do. I think that's what I'm gonna do, to be honest. So I'm gonna walk two. Actually, no, no, let's do something else first. Let's um, first play one of these cards and see what we have for tasks here. Um, cover, we don't want anyone to cover this round. So we will play pay one more to look at that card. Attack, these card guys are gonna attack again, that's perfect. So I'm gonna put these back in the order that the strike is at the top. That's great. And then you see, you can play, you can do as much as you want during your round. You're just limited by the number of cards and you don't have a hand limit either. So that's, it's, it's, a pretty, it's pretty interesting. So I will walk two down here to this guy and I will get them out of the stealth region. So I'm gonna, Take this card here. You may move one of your companion units one space with you while you travel during this turn. Um, I just can't move onto an enemy M space, but that's fine. So I'm gonna move with him there. Okay. And then we still would have cards to look at these guys because maybe we could get these to attack also. And what would I want? Well, well, I'm not quite sure if I want them to attack. I think I'm gonna walk two more to this guy here and use that friendly guide again to move him over here like this. And I think that is pretty okay for now. I will save my other cards. Okay, so let's see what all of these do. We know what the ocelots are gonna do. Oh, they're gonna strike too. That's not too bad. That's pretty good actually, nice. So we see here, unknown speed, start of army phase again. Uh, okay, they will not attack because we see here revoked at the start of the army phase, cancel the task part of this order. So we have to lower the motivation by one again, which is okay, but now we need to be careful because we will lose another motivation now. We need to lower their motivation too. And here, um, the, the speed is now doesn't matter because they already started. Attack with units in the cog group. So he will attack again actually exceeding the five health points. So this guy will be put here with the defeated units and the motivation will be lowered by one. And this guy will also attack that one here for three damage. So we need to be a little bit careful now because they are lowered. The macaws here on the left are lowered quite strongly already and we still need to lower the ocelots. So now we need to pay attention to that. And I forgot to draw four cards again. I think that's gonna be a theme. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Uh, distraction friendly guide. Ah, that's these are my old cards. Carrier pigeon. Um, that doesn't. Yeah, I can just draw a, another card. Um, here I can remove two damage tokens from a unit. That's not too bad. When I'm on the same, when I share the same space. Look at one top card from any armies or a deck, from any deck. That's not too bad either. Okay, what do I want now? I want these guys to attack over there, right. 
the circle guys. That wouldn't be too bad. Have the circle, the circle um, group attack the ocelots. And I'll just have to hope the ocelots are not going to do anything. So that might be an idea. Okay, so I don't need... I'm going to use that card. Because I share space with the macaws. I can look at their deck. Strike. The circle guys will attack. Yes, I will just put that back. And leave it the way it is. That's great. And now I do have more cards. So I could also take a look at the Ocelot's deck. And um, what do I want the Ocelot's to do? Well, hmm. I think I want the Ocelot's to do nothing. But they could also attack. I think that wouldn't be too bad if they attacked, right? What about this guy here? Am I going to heal this guy back up? Well, no. What I'm going to do is I will... No. Well, yeah. I'm going to take this one and walk over here. And then I'm going to play this card and take a look at the top deck here. Cover. This guy would cover. I don't really want that. So let me look at another card. Also cover. Hmm. I don't like that too much. But now I don't have any cards anymore I can play. So, well, then... Who do I want to cover? Well, then let's let's him let him cover because he can be damaged anyway later on. So let the circle guy be covered first. Okay. So now I'm actually thinking about drawing back four cards like that, and then let the battle commence. Like that. Like that. Okay. Slow, normal. So these will start first. Each unit in this group deals and takes double damage. Okay. In the circle group. And the circle group gains plus two cover. Okay. Interesting. Um, so we know that. And here we have organizing. At the end of the army phase. At the end of the army phase. Okay. So first let's strike here. So the circle guys will strike. He will deal... 3 damage to this guy, and he will not receive double damage because only the circle group will do. So, 3 damage over here, and he will also damage him for 3. Um, but he will have 2 fortification or 2 defense, but everything is doubled. So, 4 defense and 6 damage, so he will receive 2 damage still. Okay, so before we commence with our turn, how does it look like? We want the Ocelots to lose two more motivation and you want them to lose one motivation. Oh, here, we forgot about that. At the end of the army phase, the army phase is called up to three cards from your hand. Okay. Shuffle your order discard piles into your order decks, including this order's task. Place this card back into your hand and lower your motivation by one. I think this is a card that it used with Skirmish. I'm not quite sure because I can't put the order cards in my hand. So what I'm going to do for now is just, I'm just going to lower the motivation. I'm going to, I will shuffle the decks, like they said, um, but I will not take the card into my hand because I don't know what to do with that. But I will lower my motivation by one. So these are now fine. They shouldn't lose any more motivation, maximum one, but we need to um, get their motivation down. Okay, so let me shuffle this in here. All right, so hmm, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? These are hopefully going to stay there because they can't move any further because this guy is there. So I think I will walk here and put some fortification on their, on their tile. Um, so let's do that. Let's first walk. Let's take a card that I don't really... I, I want to keep that. I don't really want to keep that. So I'm going to walk over here. And I will put fortification on there. I don't have a whole lot, but maybe a little bit. So let's put take these, put these put two cards there and put two fortification on their tile just to be safe a little bit. And then I think I'm gonna walk over here to use emergency care. Use one of your damaged companion units, remove two damage tokens from it. So I'm gonna remove these two damage tokens here and leave one there. And now I only have one card left. One, two, three, four. So and now I don't know what they will draw next round. I think they will cover. What they will do, I have no idea. But now I'm in a pretty safe spot, I hope. So let's see. 
Sl slow speed, start of army phase. At the start of the army phase, cancel the task part of this order. I will do lower the side motivation by one. Oh, I'm really lucky at the moment. I need just one motivation, lower one motivation here, keep that there, and everything's good. Each unit in this group has minus one damage until the end of the round. Okay, um, but they will move forward. The circle ones will, will move forward. So this guy will move, but I, I can't because there's already an enemy there. And this guy will move over there. Um, I could decide to move with him. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move with him because I might need to place some fortification on here, but I'm not quite sure yet. So let's see. Okay, so it's my turn. So what did I draw? Choose one of your undamaged companion units. Give it two damage tokens. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. But they're all damaged, so, well, that's not going to help me at the moment. Choose spade with a unit and place two fortification on that space. So I can put fortification any place. That's not too bad. And then remove two damage tokens and the false order. Um, look at the bottom card of any deck, uh, of the companion unit stick. So we, if we can get the circle macaws to attack, that would be enough. And I think they can hardly deal enough damage to kill two. So that's what we're going to do now. So I will um, take this one here and look at the top deck of the macaws. Cover. We don't want cover. Then I'm going to play this one. We want circle strike. No, we don't want cover. Oh no. This is my last card now. Okay, then I'm gonna play this one. With this one, I can actually take two cards even. Cover, strike, circle strike. So I'll put all of these below the strike one and that should set us up for a win, I hope. Let's see if my tactic works. You never know what else is drawn here. So we have, even have a fast speed here, so they will strike immediately and they will move okay but here is speed fast so they will go first strike attack with units in the circle group so this guy will do three damage but we gave him one to one too many damage tokens because he was actually on such a shield field so he so he should have only gotten two before and um i forgot about that and now he will do three damage but only two damage oh no so he's still not dead but wait we're not done yet because this guy will also attack that guy and you see there's no there's no shield token here or whatever so he will just do three damage outright he has only five health as we can see there so this guy would actually be a downer and motivation is lowered to two we can take these again and now we still need to do that the circle guys will move, but we don't have any circle guys here anymore. That doesn't matter too, because we don't have any circle units left. That was the end of this round. And now, as with every round, we check the motivation and we see we have managed to get both armies' motivation down into the green area, both at two. So we actually won the first scenario. This is great. I I already looked at this scenario the, uh, one, one time before, so I could would kind of know how to play the game. And I did not manage to do that. So that's great. Now we take a look at the campaign book. If you want to avoid spoilers, then now would be your cue to really turn off the video. So we see that um, we would have won if we, if both sides withdrew. Both sides withdrew. Expressing enthusiasm or relief aren't Maron's biggest strength. Still, he felt both of them more than he had in years after hearing what the adventurers had accomplished. He put his thoughts on paper and sent the letter to the adventurers. I might even go as far as to admit that I had minor doubts about this plan. Doubts that I have now vanished. Don't let this first success lower your guard though. Future endeavors will need your full concentration and hubris born of success will only hinder you. If we continue involving ourselves in these matters and influencing the right folks, this incident can be over sooner than I ever dared to hope. The Ushia scouts did not take over the outpost, true, but the commanders will get the details about the border defenses. That is what they were after in the first place. What they choose to do with that information is out of our hands. At least for the time being, I will see what I can scrape together. Meanwhile, you should follow the river downstream where you will find Mariokan Bridges, the primary river crossing in the area. If Houth Uchiha dies to invade, 
decides to invade, that will be the obvious choice of route and I will need you when they arrive. The letter ends with a wish and more words of encouragement. Good luck and safe travels. This was an important first step. Marin's letter was certainly something new for the adventurers. In the usual couriers, appreciative words had been few and far between. Having finished reading the letter, the adventurers head east with their next mission fresh on their minds. Alright, so, congratulations on fulfilling your victory condition in the first scenario. Both sides withdrew from the battlefield. And it wasn't too bad. We had to lower motivation by 6 altogether, but we only lost 2 units. So, that's not too bad. I think we did a pretty good job there. We were very lucky, but we're not going to tell those guys. Draw the outcome card numbered 1 and read the reward section of it. You can use this special effect once during scenario 2. So now you see when we go over to scenario 2 next time, which we will not do now, of course, but in the next video, um, then we can use the reward. So we have that. We have the campaign deck here, the first half, and we have the outcome 1. This card we will take, the rest we will put back in the box. And now we can read that. So we have outside resources and wasted resources. Why? I'm not quite sure. Wine, cheese, fruits, sweet spices, all from faraway lands with exotic names all far above their pay grade, sent by an anonymous benefactor. After setup, draw two cards from the resource deck. Show them to all players and collectively decide which one or two players places them into their hands. So we do have more cards at the at the beginning of the next scenario two more okay that's not too bad wasted resources after setup collectively discard a total of two cards from your hands they had a lot of move and very little time without a doubt one or two crates would end up in pieces on the ground okay so we do get resources um we probably get the reward ah the reward section so we get these outside resources we get the cards we probably would have gotten this here as a penalty if we wouldn't have won like this. So if you lose a scenario, you, you didn't lose the game. The game just changes. And I think um, if you lose a leader, for example, then if that leader would appear in a later scenario, you would not put him there and immediately lower motivation or something like that, I think. So that's very interesting. So the game actually really evolves based on what happened. Did you win? Did you lose? Who withdrew? So that's a really cool thing. So this card will be very helpful next time because we get two more resource cards and you saw how many resources we needed all right so this was the game it's a really interesting game i still need a few more plays and a few more scenarios to actually make up my mind about it and then i will probably also do a review about it so um if you're still watching thank you very much for sticking to the end i ho really hope you enjoyed my playthrough i had a lot of fun recording this this will take a long time to edit but that's pretty much the same with all my videos so um if you enjoyed this video and you maybe enjoy other videos on my channel too just consider subscribing to my channel because i'm giving you content every week so there's lots more to come and i will also continue this game it's probably going to take a few weeks but i will definitely record the next scenario here all right thank you very much i'll speak to you soon Bye bye